Mix it with Mike Bootcamp Tip, the power of dry reverb. You're probably asking, what is dry reverb? And that's the reason why I put it in parentheses, because uh, reverb itself is technically wet, I guess the way that we describe it in audio. But I really break down reverbs into two basic categories. Uh, the first category being reverbs that you hear. Those are the most obvious ones, the big plate reverb on the snare drum or the great, you know, nice hall, rich hall program on the vocal that gives you all these layers of reverb with echoes in it. And then there is dry reverb. And dry reverb is felt more than it is heard. The power of dry reverb and the reason why it's so effective is that our brains are very finely tuned to measuring the space, the size of the space that we're in, and also the feeling of the space. So when we actually walk into a room, if it has carpet and big heavy curtains and a couch and all these sorts of things that absorb energy, what we have is a warm feeling from the place because there's not a lot of reverberant energy. And what is there, most of the high frequency energy, the fluttery kind of energy gets absorbed and so what we have is this space that's sort of warm and comforting and to some degree inviting. Whereas if we're in a very reflective space with stone floors or tile floors and reflective walls with nothing to really absorb it, it can start to get annoying all the fluttering of echoes and reverb that goes on. And using this concept and bringing it in to something just as simple as like setting up drums, and this works in every style of music. When I play it for you and you listen to it, it's something that you'll start to notice in almost every production that you hear, but you may not be approaching it this way. Because one of the things that really defines like a professional mix, uh, one of the many things that defines a professional mix from just, you know, a mix, somebody else's mix, is that sense of space, that sense of separation, that feeling like you're part of an experience, which is the song. That's the whole thing. And part of inviting somebody into that space is creating a space that's comfortable for them to be in. So I'm going to show you how to do it. So what I have here is just uh, the basic uh, drums here. I'm just going to isolate out some, because there's a whole series of percussion and stuff that goes along with this. Which uh, So I'm going to solo out just the stuff so we don't hear the bass. Uh, we're just going to have some drums here. And what I have is them feeding into a return here. Now I have nothing on here just so you see I'm not like pre-preparing everything. I show you just how simple it is. So if we start off and we just listen to this loop, which you've heard on the boot camp tips many times, but here's the basics. All right, so we have this just simple basic loop. Now what I'm gonna do here, and, and I do this in one of two ways. Sometimes I'll use early reflections, but what I'm gonna show you here, rather than using early reflections, is just reverb. So this big orange blob here is just reverb. I'm doing this purposefully just with an R verb, even though it's a reverb that's been around for a while, it's very flexible, and it pretty much does all the things that I want it to do. So uh, I'm just gonna show it here, just so you can see this is not about having some super specialized reverb, but it's actually something simple. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the room program. You could use things that work really well are room programs, non-linear programs for those of you who have the UA system or if you have a system that uses the AMS RMX 16 reverb or samples from that, the non-linear program is really great. Um, any kind of short reverb, small chambers can actually work quite effectively, but I'll start with a room. Okay, with just a basic space here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring the reverb time down very short, extremely short. So in this case, it's 100 milliseconds, right? So this is very short. And then I'm gonna set a size for the space. So what I'm gonna do is, and I, I really think this is a great way to work with reverb if you're actually going to um, put any kind of effect on there, really exaggerate the effect so that you hear it that way you can really dial it in. And what it does is it gives you the ability when you mix it back down and add it in, if you can get it to work very effectively loud when you bring it in at a lower level and mix it in, it gives you some flexibility to raise it if you need to or lower it if you need to without actually losing the sound. You find a tonal place 
for the reverb to exist in the mix. So let's start with this exaggerated. All right, so I'll put it in a place where we can hear it. And, and so now you could hear it, but it sounds a little echoey. Okay, or it sounds like there's a delay, and part of that is the size of the space, which is quite big. So I'm going to shrink down the size of the space here. Right, so now it's very short, right? Like it's super short. I might raise it up a little bit just so we could hear it a little bit more. But first, I'm going to put in a little bit of pre delay. And the pre delay is important because it adds a sense of depth to the sound, right? You have a delay before the onset of reverb. And that delay is means it defines space. How far back does it go before the reverb starts to come back to you? Right, so now all of a sudden, just with a little bit of pre-delay, now we can hear a little bit of depth being added in. All right, so I'm exaggerating this a little bit. I'm going to tighten it up a little bit to a shorter delay, but you can hear as I increase or decrease the delay, I'm kind of setting the size space that I can have for this. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it back and I'm going to mix it in. Right, And what I'm listening for, because I'm not trying to hear it, I want to feel the effect of it. So when I take it out, and put it back in, what I want to hear is a sense of uh, a feeling of space that kind of comes in that sort of surrounds the sound. So it's kind of hard to describe other than that. In other words, if you focus just on the dry sound and you say, well, how does it change? It probably won't change things in terms of the frequency response or anything like that. You, you can start to play with the EQ of the reverb or shape the tonal character of the reverb with the damping as a way to kind of shape the tonal sound. You know, so sometimes you can add a little presence or bring a little body into a sound that lacks it. It's really great for stuff like that. Um, but really what we're listening for is this sort of subtle sense of space. And when you put it in the context of the mix, you'll hear it more powerfully. But right now I'm gonna, I'm gonna blend it in, okay? And then the other thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to take and I'm going to EQ out most of the high frequency response because what you get with this is with the high frequency response is you start to get a little bit of a fluttery kind of sound and there's a little bit of that that exists in there. So I'm going to pull this back. Now, this basically, uh, there is an EQ here, so it probably, I'm not sure if I could adjust it any more than that. It's set basically to 1K. I'll sometimes put a separate EQ if I want to get something a little bit tighter or a little bit more accurate here. But, you know, I can even, you know, kind of uh, work my way up around it here a little bit with that. I'm very limited here with what I have at, at available to me just here with this particular reverb. But you can always add something on if you like. Right, so again, very subtle. Let's bring in uh, let's bring in some of the other instrumentation, like the bass. Right, you can really hear it with that backbeat, that clap, 
the claps that are that are sitting there where you kind of feel this this field, but also with the kick drum. And this is something you'll hear over and over again if you really focus in on it. And I know I'm making it subtle here, but really try to key in on that difference of just the dimensionality or the depth field. It's not that instruments move back, but that you feel like there's a space around those elements of the drum kit. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to play a little bit of music and I'm going to take this in and out. And I want you to notice how the drums will be, without this, very flat. Okay, they, they'll lack sort of dimension. And then when I open this up, you'll hear them feel uh, like they have some dimension to them and now connect more, in particular with the keyboard sounds that have more reverb and depth already built into them. What's interesting is that this one effect just on the drums actually helps to improve the depth and clarity and focus of everything else in the mix. And if you go um, kind of grouping by grouping, like I may put drums and percussion into one of these, do something that's a little bit independent for guitars, make it unique so that each instrument is optimized into the space or feel that you want it to be in. Like a lot of those keyboard sounds want to exist more in the back, so I might create a bigger space. Maybe I use early reflections instead of using reverb as a way of kind of creating a little bit more depth or enhancing the depth field. I could also take this, or if I work with vocals, you saw me do things where I would do something very similar to this and then just put some kind of an imager plugin on it. And what that will do, uh, assuming I can get my spelling uh, set here, is uh, it'll give me the ability to kind of pull it forward in the mix. So let me mute this back here for a second. So there, now if I, uh, if I mix this in, and you could really hear all that like just almost like pulls everything out of the speakers towards you. Now, it may not be the best thing to do, if you want the vocals to sort of exist in that space. But just with that in mind, it just shows you what you can do with this. So the idea here is if I spread that ambient information out to the sides, out of phase, so it disappears from the center and pushes out sort of almost to the sides of your head, it more or less puts you in that same ambient space because you're, you're providing information that's coming from the side of the listener, not just from in front of the listener, assuming they're sitting in front of speakers, but that's the basic idea.
right? So just this whole concept on its own is a very powerful way of actually bringing up depth out of a mix because this is something that you can't just, it's hard to do just with EQ or just with compression. And if you only focus on the aspects of reverb being heard and you try to make every reverb heard, what ends up happening is that you end up just with a pile of of noise that's sort of added into your mix that just sort of smears everything and makes it hard to hear. But when you create this dimensional space, like for the drums, for example, here, when you start to add reverb onto it, that reverb now sort of fills out that unique space that you've created for the drums, which would be different from the unique space that you create for the vocals. And now all of a sudden, you can start to blend in and have longer reverbs that blend in with these things and actually start to sound natural and don't step and interfere with each other. And that's a whole other boot camp tip. But uh, there you have it. That's a, a boot camp tip. The power of dry reverb, or what I call dry reverb here. I use early reflections for a lot of this. You'll see me talk about that quite a lot. But uh, dry reverb is another way to put it um, using the actual reverb element of it as opposed to the early reflections, which has a tendency to be, to, to be a little bit more fluttery sounding. So there you have it. Boot camp tip. Power of dry reverb. Uh, this tip and many others, many, 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 many others uh, exist in the boot camp that is on the mixingwithmike.com website. Go check it out there. It's a 52-week program. Uh, there's over 200 hours of content, loads of multi-tracks to work with, uh, exercises to work on every week throughout the whole program. Uh, and it's a pretty intense course loaded with information. And uh, it's I hate to think of it more than of just like tips because it's not 200 hours of tips. It's 200 hours of really showing you how productions and mixes are put together and the connection of the mixing decisions you make to the program material that you have to work with and how you really draw the most emotion and the most out of what it is that you're working with, no matter uh, what the song is, what style of music. Uh, so there you have it, uh, Bootcamp Tip, Power of Dry Reverb. Check it out.